Hi there, I'm Rick Payway for Gun Cheap and another special vehicle walk around. This one is really cool for me because I know the guy. This is Rich Collin. Hi. How Hi. you doing, Rick? He does complete off-road in Dubuque, Iowa, which is cool because in 2014, 14, we took Ultimate Adventure there okay. to his own property where we had, what, a day and a half of fun and yes. breakage and winching. And, and what do we have in Iowa, Rick? Well, you don't have any four-wheel drive places. We have, hills. We have lots of hills. Yeah, you have a lot of hills. Oh. Yes, yes, you have everything <laughs> necessary. We broke stuff there, right? So this was a project that he built for Bubba Rope for the 2023 Ultimate Adventure. Yep. And it took you, what, a month? Three months. Okay, three months, so, but still. Yeah, three, three months from we don't have an idea to what we're building to having something for an Ultimate right. Adventure. Yeah. But you have a four-wheel drive store. You've been doing old Jeeps and new Jeeps for... 100 years, so. A long time. A long time. Long time. You're one of the few people in Iowa that knows what they're doing. So, this is what it is. What year is it? This is a 1956 Willys pickup truck. There you this go. This is actually one of the one ton variant ones, which we found out after the fact. Made no different stuff because all the one ton stuff was gone at that point. Right. But um, now it has one ton stuff. Now we're back to the one okay. ton stuff again. So, let's let's start with the, with the front. I noticed two things. Yep. Really modern lights. What are these? Uh, those are rough country lights. Okay, that's uh, fine. So we want to do something with some LED to get some light out there right. driving on the roads. But what's the neat, cool lights? The neat, cool lights are some KC Daylighters that actually belong to one of my mechanics. I did wire them up and they do work. So yes. those are our off Those are 385,000 candle power, yep. power and draw about 100 amps a piece. <laughs> so th these definitely Battery old killers. School, right? Yep. But it's so cool to have the original foam covers. I put those on in. Yep. So the chassis is a 2007 uh, JKU that we pulled out of a junkyard. And the reason we did that is uh, the JKs have all of the conversion trusses to run the one ton stuff. We have a Barnes 3 link on here, so all the bracketry was prefigured. Right. We didn't have to go back and reinvent the wheel for this already ridiculously short time frame that we had to work on it. Uh, the front bumper, you know, you could run a JK bumper on there. We wanted to get the winch far enough forward that we didn't have to cut the grill at all. Right. So we had to move the mount point an inch and a half forward. Uh, we were grabbing different um, winch bumpers and stuff out of the showroom, you know, full width, a stubby, and none of them really looked right on there. Yep. So we just started doing some cardboard mock-ups on here. So we got the curve coming under. Right. Uh, it just worked out really, really well. Gave it a nice look, relatively JK-esque. The underpinnings, you got one ton suck. Correct. Yep. So like the front axle, check that out. Front, front axle is a Super Duty Dana 60. Uh, we are running, like I said, a combination of Barnes and Artec trusses on it. So we got the Artec steering knuckles. We got some trusses uh, from the Barnes stuff. Um, and suspension. Running. Suspension is a four-inch Icon shocks and springs. Nice. We did do the hydraulic bump stops in there. We had those set up when we were running the 38s on here for mock-up. When we put the 40s on, we had to lower them right now, so we have to deal with that when we get back and do some adjustment. Yeah. Yes. But they're 40-inch what? Uh, these are the 40-inch Milestar Patagonia MT2s. Okay. So not the original problematic tires that they came out with. Um, I had zero expectation with these tires when we put them on and was thoroughly impressed with and everything well, that we did with that's them. That's cool. What wheels? Um, uh, those are Raceline wheels. Raceline. We had uh, local oh, uh, Greenfield Customs, local powder shop company in town. I called him and said, hey, I want some dirty white wheels. I want them to look like some old wagon wheels. Yeah, and he messed perfect. around for quite a while playing with different colors and stuff and trying to figure them out. I think he absolutely knocked it out of the park yeah. on those wheels. Yeah, they really, really it's look supposed good to on look that, that way. Exactly. Right. Yeah. All right, so you have the stock cab, stock body, but it hasn't been repainted. This is original patina, right? This is the original patina for this truck. So this truck didn't come with the tailgate, but I did find a green tailgate for it, which is really close. So we were That's with nice. That. Um, the rockers that we made, we had to try and patina to match. Same thing with the roll bar in the back. And then yep. really the only paint on the outside that you see uh, on the body is the rear fenders. So we had to stretch the rear fenders nine inches. Again, so to it's be proportionate able to, with the with To the be able to 40s. cover the 40 inch tires. Yep. Um, and when we did that, that took care of the issue that we were looking at, that the wheelbase of the pickup truck and the wheelbase of the JK are about two inches different. So when we stretch the fender nine, just recenter the fender over the wheel, and all of a sudden right. that two inch issue just went away for us. Got it. So what about the rear axle? Rear axle is a GM 14 bolt uh, out of a later model. So we got the disc brakes on it. Um, running Yukon gears front and rear. We got an ARB air locker in the 14 bolt, a Yukon zip locker in the front. What ratio? Uh, 538, I believe. 538, yeah, that's yep. about right for, yep. for those big old big old tires yep. and this is your gas tank? Yep. We got a 15 gallon CJ gas tank up in there using an MTS uh, wow. 
in-tank pickup and return, running a Holley Terminator system to run the 5.3. Uh, built the skid plate on there, yeah. got the backup light integrated into the skid plate. So your shop built the axles too, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And, and all the skid nice plates in the frame, and we had to cut the rear frame at the wheel arch to pull it up oh, to be up with the back. Look at that. Yep. That's hard to find a matching tailgate. Yep. And then, of course, you look at it, you did great on this. And then the original over here to your right, that's a thing of beauty. And we yeah. got we got Dinky's collar, which came on here. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. Uh, the taillights are actually Model A taillights mm -hmm. that we found. Uh, sitting at the desk in the shop one night having dinner, looking for something different. And then you say... Um, and these just popped up, and it was like, yes, those are the ones. Those are the ones. Yep. They, they, so we built a little, little cage around them just to protect them a little bit. Um, yeah, on Ultimate Adventure, that is a light grabber. Yes. Sort of like on my trailer. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. And That's then we cool. had to build the, the fuel neck to get the right. fuel fill higher than where the tank was sitting once we pulled it up to the bottom of the box. So this mushroom roll bar, which yep. is popular in the 70s, yep. you guys make that? Yep. <laughs> yep, custom made that. And um, period correct. Yep. The reason we did that is we wanted to make these uh, hooks on here yeah. so that we could display the Bubba Gear product on right. the truck. As well the as entire, use it. <laughs> well, the entire time. So we had another set that we were actually using for oh, recovery. Really? Uh -huh. And by doing that, every photo that this truck is in has the product on the right. rack yet being displayed, along with being used. Sponsored by Barreau, yeah. Yep. yep. And this giant orange rope. The giant orange rope is uh, their new show rope. Uh, it's <laughs> non-functional. It's only got a loop on one end. Uh, Jim wanted something that was a little bit bigger. They used to have their uh, python rope. Right. They would take the red, white, and blue one. Super cool rope. That was like 360-some thousand pound braking strength. Uh, this one is a million pounds. A million pounds. pounds. Yeah. So yeah. No, we don't it's, need it. It's big, it's ridiculous, and it's really, really cool. <laughs> All right. How about if we crawl underneath and take a look at the transmission and transfer sure. case? Awfully uh, nice rails to slide underneath yes and we wanted to doing those we wanted to keep the contour wow. of the side of the body yeah you know so this this worked out really really well that's cool so all of our body mounts and stuff all go down to the frame we're not we're using any of the factory body mounts so the cab is basically hard mounted to the frame right and then that is also the roll cage mount for those as well oh, that's perfect so basically you don't have a transfer case. Yep, it's hiding up here. It's just a, it's an old 241 manual linkage yeah. transfer case. Uh, what exactly it came out of, couldn't tell you. It yeah. was in one of my employees' barn and he brought it in. 241 was a good transfer case. It, it was. works. It yeah. works really, really well. And what, a 4L80E? 4060. 4060, yep. yeah, so that's the all you need. So the 99 Chevy truck yeah. that we used for the donor for the motor for the 5.3, yeah. we brought that and the 4L60 over. Um, and then just and this is really up. nice because this skid plate, it's not too thick, but it's not thin, obviously. It's Correct. been well used. Yep. And it covers and protects everything. You yep. can go over a rock, slide over it, and keep going. Yep. And even after that, your drive shaft is really high. That's we nice. We kept the drive shaft high. We did the pinion support down there for the 14 bolt because they're oh, meticulous yeah. for grabbing rocks. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, let's get up and do our monkey bars. Take a look inside. All right. That, that's where you guys lived for a week. Yes, we did. A couple more inches of legroom would have been nice, but other than that, it worked really well. Um, the floors, we did put new floors in it. We did have to build a new tunnel for it because those were all rusty uh, once we sandblasted to get it ready for paint. But we got the rhino lining on the floors. We had the rhino lining in the bed. Um, we did the Summit brand of Sound Deadener, similar to the Dynamat, on the roof behind the seats and in the doors. Um, up in the up in the A pillar area across the cowl to try and keep the noise down. Just enough to take the edge take off the that noise. Little tinny noise off of everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and it's, we got, got a red the... red design shifter running the 4L60E. The steering column is just a generic Summit, um, you know, hot rod steering column that we stuck in. Uh, Crosley Garage made that really nice aluminum gauge bezel on there. So the '56 Willys had the cool rectangle gauges, but we couldn't find replacements for them. The ones I had were really roached. And also that bezel that went around them wasn't in the best of shape, but I yep. like the idea. So right. we went with that Crosley Garage uh, retro bezel. And that's just really a, a kind of a cool thing. Yep. It looks and, kind of factory. Yeah, yeah, it's, it looks very similar. Yeah, you know, you and I itself. know it's not, but yep. Yep. And it then, works. And then just some auto meter gauge yep. cluster to put in there. And I like the fact that you left all of the factory doors so those are actually, so in the pickup truck, the seat would fold forward and you'd access that right. storage from on top. 
when we put the CJ5 best top seats in there and mounted them to the cage, you can't access those holes anymore. Right. So I put some doors on the sides similar to what they did with the old wagons. Wagon, right. And then you have that never ending storage compartment that can take so much right. stuff. It's amazing. Right. Well, you have um, to be careful with that because rats like to live in there too. Uh, it'll never be, it's, it'll it's never be never in a rat ended. spot again. <laughs> so. It's not going back to the woods? It's not going back to or the woods. Or parked outside? No. no. All right. This will get used and driven at home and probably be in the showroom all winter. Oh, well, that's the nice thing about the patina. It's going to stay just the way it is. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's a pretty complete truck. What was your favorite favorite part of it? My favorite part of the truck itself is the patina and the condition <laughs> of the patina. Good, 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 yeah. But yeah. ultimately, it was the opportunity that Bubba Gear gave me to build this truck for them. Yeah. And not only to use it on Ultimate Adventure, but then to invite me to bring it to their booth at SEMA. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, anytime you get into an inside to exactly. a SEMA booth, I, cool. I honestly never thought I would have the opportunity to be inside at SEMA. All right, so tell me what's under the hood. Under the hood is the same as everybody else, a 5.3 LS. <laughs> uh, as you said, it's the equivalent of the old Chevy 350. Yeah. Uh, it's out of a 99 Chevy pickup truck. It's the same donor truck that we got the 4L60 uh, transmission out of. The reason we did this is, as you know, Ultimate Adventure, the, the participants never know where you're going to be. Uh, right. Going with the 5.3 LS, we could go to any small little burg of 500 people that has an auto parts store, and more than likely they're going to have the part You'll that we need parts, right. to keep it running. And you got everything packaged in here beautifully. It, you got your it steering actually cooler, packaged in very P well. PSC steering. A power booster with probably GM Master Cylinder? Yep, uh, yeah. the, the power booster and brake hanger are right out of that same 99 uh, truck. Wow, the, that's awesome. The Master Cylinder is actually out of a one-ton dually two-wheel drive truck. So that's the there inch and go. a half dual stage. Right. Um, so it's got the big bore. Yep, it's got the and big look, bore. And look, you got your air clear way up here, so you could do, that's four feet of water forty. Yep. No problem. Yep. And then the upper fan shroud is actually just a trimmed down fan shroud from that same donor it truck. It was factory. It was factory. It, it, worked, well, it, out, was. it worked out really well. Yeah. Yep. That's so. cool. And you converted to electric wipers. Yes. Of they course. still don't work very good, but they're electric wipers. Well, they they, they move work. when you turn them on. That's and all that's you about care it. about. <laughs> Cobb says you don't have wipers. Yes, I do. Yep. 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 That's beautiful. So that's it. This is a awesome example of what what to do with an old willie's truck yep. thank you so much for doing it and make sure that if you like this kind of stuff like share and subscribe to gone cheap it and we're going to give you this stuff all the time so see you next time